Hi there, Linda Goodall here with another little hatch scratching. Today we're really going basic and talking about how to draw shapes and hatch. So this video is really for one of my Facebook friends who's having a hard time mastering those right and left clicks, which is how we control object shapes and hatch. Well, guess what? Me too. Since the 1980s, I've been using Adobe Illustrator and that software has Bezier vector drawing tools. They weren't a piece of cake to master either, but after diligent practice, tracing all kinds of different shapes, I got the hang of it. I became a master at drawing with the minimum number of nodes that you could possibly put on a shape. Then, in 1994, when I was looking to upgrade my embroidery digitizing software, I found one that had the same kind of drawing tool, so it was just an easy transition for me to pick it. And Besides, it was only one of two that worked on my Mac, so there weren't a lot of choices. Now that I'm using Hatch, I'm having to learn to think and work differently, and one of those is drawing with right and left clicks. I call it drawing because in my old software, you could actually draw objects that never had any stitches on them. So you do an object, and then you put a stitch on it. In most other digitizing software, I didn't know this before, when you draw, it's automatically a stitch object, and that's how it works in Hatch. So it's not a two-step thing, and that, that has its advantages and, in my opinion, its drawbacks, because I'm used to working the other way. And I've since learned that that program was an anomaly in the digitizing world. It's hard for me to learn another program when I expect them to work like Adobe Illustrator tools, so I'm really having to rethink how I work in here. So here's some shapes and we're going to practice drawing on them. And that is the whole secret to learning to draw with right and left clicks is practice. And I'll show you some tricks, but you really need to just get some shapes, throw them up there on the screen, and trace them. And try to trace them with the fewest number of nodes and as accurately as possible without being too anal about it. We'll talk about that again. So over time, as you practice, you will start to be able to predict how a node is going to affect, whether you place a right or left click, how it's going to affect the shape since the last node and towards the next node. And it just, it takes practice and observance and focus. So let's start. We're going to start with this star. It's really simple, but it gives us some basic principles. These are all going to be left clicks because we have straight lines. Left click is a, an angle or a straight or a corner, and a right click would be on a curve. So this is all just left clicks. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Digitize Toolbox. I'm going to pick Close Shape. It really works for an open shape, too. I'm going to start at the top. Why? Well, it's because it feels natural to me. If you were going to draw a star, this might be where you would draw it on a piece of paper. And because it's a closed shape, it doesn't matter where you start. So I'm going to start left click, left click, left, 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 left. You can see that I'm not being absolutely precise. I could have made it more precise by zooming in. And I'm going to stop right there and just press enter. There's my star. Now. Did you see how many places I clicked? I only clicked where the angle of the line changed. So you really only need to put a node where there's a change in direction. So let's change that to, um, I'm going to press O, and I'm going to change it to an outline. And let's zoom in. I just pressed B, and I'll press H to reshape. And then see, I can, I can touch it up a bit. Now. If I had sewn it that way, would anybody notice? Probably not. So you don't have to get too anal about that. So let's scroll over. I'm going to minus out a bit here. And we're going to tackle this shape next. Now it looks hard, but what I'm going to show you is going to make it so easy you'll just think it's crazy. So once again, close shape. We'll leave it at an outline. And I'm going to start here. And notice that we have these little valleys and we have peaks. And the valleys are an angle. So 
guess what we'll put there? A left click. And these are a curve, so guess what we'll put here? A right click. So I'm going to start where I can put a left click. Now, that's just an arbitrary thing for me. I like to start where I can put a left click. I don't know why. If it turns out the left click doesn't look good when I get done, well, I can just change it to a right click. So I'm going to left click, right click, left click, right click. And see how it's so nicely following that curve? So fewest number of nodes, right, left, right, left, right, left. And I'll just work my way around. You know, us Mac people, we're not used to doing right clicks, so this is a challenge for me. So I'm going to end there with a the right click. And notice that I didn't connect it. I'm going to end at the last node, press Enter, and there it is. And once again, I can uh, adjust things. I can see that I didn't do a left click down here when I was talking. But I'll press O for object. It'll select the last one, H. I'll select it, press space bar, and it changes it to a left click. That was that one. So you can see how right and left clicks work. Let's try something a little harder. So, you know what, I'm going to get this out of the way. So here's some letters. Let's do B and zoom in on these guys. These are some letters from a font called Sweetie Donut. And I recently digitized these as appliques. They will not be in a ESA font or a keyboard font for Hatch because you can't make ESA fonts in Hatch. Boohoo to me because I'm a font addict and I've created some couple hundred fonts in my old software, but that's the way it is. So we're going to just do this icing part. That looks pretty tricky, right? So I'm going to, this time I'm do an open shape, and I'm going to pick a satin move that back out of the way oh I did something I screwed something with my there we go resequence bar so I'm gonna pick that I'm gonna start with the left click right 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 left enter and looky there see how that how nice that looks and did I put a bunch of clicks on there no I only put a click where our node where the object changed direction that's the key now I didn't get too close here so let's do O H whoops H and I'm going to select that see if I can move it into place and if not you know I might have to add an extra node or something here to get it to conform a little better but once again even if I left it as is who do you think is going to notice that I didn't get that little curve perfect on that letter once I stitch it out and somebody else sews it they don't have this artwork they are going to know so Give yourself a break here. Now, let's see. Let's zoom out again. Zero. Let's do this heart, because this heart is sort of a special case here. I'm going to do something a little different down here. This heart is perfectly symmetrical. Actually, there's a heart built in to Hatch. If you dig around in the Monograms toolbox and look for frames, it's just not as fat and juicy as this one. It's a little skinnier. But we're going to draw this one. So we'll make it a closed shape, and we need to have it filled for this technique. I'm only going to draw half of it. So I'm going to just start right down there. And you can see that I kind of have to choose where I want my lines, my notes to be. And I've got a little curvy there, so I might want to do something about that. Close that. and. Let's turn it to an outline. Oops. O. Outline.
and I might want to see if I could adjust that. H. What if I change that to, nope. Okay, so if I put a curved node there, it smooths out, flattens out that curve a bit. So see how you sort of start to see how it works. And you can always adjust it. So there's my shape. I'll refill it. Now, to get the other side, I'm going to go to Layout, Mirror Copy Horizontal, move that into place, press Enter, and yes, I want to merge. Look, there's my heart. Now, we should do one thing here. H. Okay, see how we have a bunch of nodes down here? Maybe you can't see that. We only have one node up here. Let me zoom in down here. So I'll do B and we'll zoom in. See how it's got some extra nodes. It's got one that kind of goes up like that. Let me show you what happens when you have too many nodes bunched up. So let's change that to an outline and see how it got kind of icky there. So I'm going to get rid of that one, get rid of that one, move that into place. But let me just add a few other nodes here. And it's kind of hard to see, but the, my stitches aren't exactly smooth in here. So you really want to work with the fewest number of nodes. And there's two reasons for that. One is that extra nodes can make your stitches get bunchy and weird. But the other thing is that it's easier to adjust a shape that has fewer nodes. So let's... Um, back out of here. So when I want to adjust the shape, I have to do it by moving a node. And the only part of the object that changes shape is between the last node and the previous node. So if I have a bunch of nodes here, let's put another one right there and another one right there. Now see how I'd have to move a whole bunch of nodes to get that fatter. So that's why you want to have the fewest number of nodes. Let's trace one of these letters up here. So B, and uh, we'll just do the F. You can see that these letters are very casual. They're not all even, so they're, they're a good kind of letter for a newbie to start with because they're so casual. This is called Sweetie Donut, if I didn't mention that before. And the shapes are meant to look like donuts. And you know, when you bake a cookie or a donut, it doesn't always have nice, regular outlines. They kind of flow a bit. So that's what's happened here with our font. And if we want to digitize around this, we'll just pick a place to start. You know, I like to start at the top. And I'm just right-clicking around. And this, drawing irregular shapes like this, will help you learn to see where you need right and left clicks. So you don't always have to sit down and digitize something that you're going to sew and do something with. Just make stuff. I did that a lot when I was getting started with this program. I'm still doing a lot because maybe I would want to learn how to use, I don't know, contour fills. And so I would play with contour fills until I figured out how it worked. And then I would make a design that used a contour fill and I would stitch that out. So I tried a bunch of different techniques so that I could learn the software. Yes, I've been digitizing for 23 years, but this software is so different and I need to really relearn from scratch. So what I did was, if we go to my designs, this is a set I created. And actually, they're just a bunch of random designs that were used to help me learn to digitize and hatch. So let's, um, let's view these larger. I wish there was something between large icons and extra large icons. But you can see these designs. I tried to use contour fills on this. Didn't work the way I wanted. So those are all lines that I digitized. Here we have a chain stitch motif that I digitized. So um, I made a, my own motif for that one. This one 
was to try out textured fills. This one was just for fun because I had a project in mind. This one I did to learn about removing overlaps. This one I did to learn about that circle placement thing that's really cool. This one I did to learn about creating my own embossing and motif fills textured on his horns there and to do a partial applique. This one is curved fills and or contour fills and uh, radial fills. Same with this one. This one is light fills and um, uh, what do you call it? Oh, that thing where you can make your own curve. I forgot the name of it. Because see, this is all new to me. So these are just designs I made to learn a different thing. This was to try instant lace. Here's another one with two appliques. And so I had to, to do an overlap. This one has some curve fills in here and some shading and different textures on the fills. And you can see that they don't, they don't have any theme other than they're all done in hatch and they use different techniques. Now, this is a set and you can download it in my shop if you want to or just download one particular design. Uh, these birds are a test to see, okay, what, how does it look differently with a light fill versus a contour fill? And how do I make it so that there aren't any travel stitches? These two designs are free. So you could go to my shop and just download those and compare them yourself because they are in EMB format, so you can open them up in Hatch and you can see what makes them tick. I'll even put a coupon code down in the description field so you can get a discount on the set. Hatch has so many cool tools to make drawing easy, even if you can't draw a straight line. So I hope that um, you'll try some of this stuff. Just go get some shapes. Practice tracing around them if you're not familiar with left and right click drawing because that, that is the secret. That's the secret to getting good at this. So thanks for watching. Please like, please comment, please subscribe, and please come back. Thanks.